It has been four and a half years since we were all in that arena together. Ten years ago, I set foot in this building. Ten years later, I'm back in this building. You know what? I'm going to tear this motherfucker apart. Where are we Pennsylvania? Chicago! The Pocomoke City? Philly. Maryland. New England, baby! <laughs> it was December of 2000 since we all experienced hardcore together. Three main events have been signed for Friday night, June 10th, Hardcore Homecoming at The Arena in South Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Of course, it will be a rematch of the night the line was crossed a three-way dance featuring the franchise Shane Douglas, Terry Funk, and Sabu, but there is more. A very personal feud will see another chapter written in blood, I have no doubt, as one-on-one -on -one, Raven takes on the Sandman, and then we will find out who is the better man. Who was the stepping stone? Who made who? So many years ago, as Jerry Lynn goes one on one with Just Incredible. Let's talk about the present situation and, uh, and Terry Funk for a minute. I'm coming back for a reason. There's, uh, I had an opportunity to go into the WWE at this time, and they sent me a contract, and sent me a very good contract, and this is the contract here, and it's, not that it's anything special or anything, but it's, uh, for quite a sum of money, and it certainly isn't for what, uh, Hulk Hogan or... Triple H or Ric Flair or The Undertaker makes, but it was uh, for quite a bit more money than for uh, this group that I'm going to perform for. And uh, I had a choice, and I had to make a choice between the two companies because I know at my age and my time again is that I can't perform two shows that close together. I wanted to go to a show where it's an extension of the guy's personalities and not a Vince McMahon's group or whatever it is. So I chose to go back and enter into the ring in the three-way dance. And, uh, that took a lot of uh, thought on my part. I talked to it about my wife, uh, with my wife, and she said, Honey, at your age, 60 years old, you ought to be looking at the Bucks, and you better be up there at the Vince McMahon show. And I said, Honey, I said, I... I said, Honey, I can't do it. I want to go back to the guys that I love. And, uh, the guys that I, uh, the guys that I uh, have been down the road with and uh, And that's why I'm not a millionaire. You know, I've done the things that uh, I've wanted to do instead of the things that I probably should have done.
And I left in 97, I didn't have that. You never could have told me that eight years later, it would be a hotter pop than we were back in 1992 and 95 underground movies. And you can't make fans do what you want them to do. They dictate to you, you don't dictate to them. And that's what the fan is all about. And I appreciate and love the fans, all the world. You know, they gave us so much. tonight's the night. I can't believe it's finally here. I have been looking for tonight's a party. Let's not call this another wrestling event because it's not. I've been to hundreds of wrestling events. I've participated in hundreds of wrestling events. Tonight is like a big party for me. I mean, it, it's almost like a, it's almost like a, a class reunion. It's almost like, a, it's almost like a high school class reunion. E except that most people would argue that we never had any class, and most of us, well, not so much me, but these other folks belong in. The film in high school, but nevertheless, I have been looking forward to this night like 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 it was the the biggest party of my life. I've been looking forward to this. I've been waiting for this hardcore homecoming to happen for four and a half years since December of 2000. It's the last time we were all here together in our second home, the arena. And speaking of the arena, you do look at this place. It used to be a real shit hole. They've done a great job. In
Your homecoming is underway. Over 1,000 fans from over six countries have packed this infamous arena, formerly a bingo hall, here in South Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, where so much wrestling history was made. I've got to tell you, I've worked in this building for seven years, and I don't ever remember this building being any hotter, I mean temperature-wise hotter, than it is tonight. Sweltering heat. And despite that, the fans are on their feet in anticipation of what will be wrestling history. The team of Simon Diamond and C.W. Anderson set to do battle. They are an established tag team. And their opponent, the first ever graduate of the House of Hardcore, Chris Chetty, and leading the way, Mikey Whitbread. And Chetty still has a pretty base. Chris Chetty, of course, the first cousin of Taz. Yes, that Taz. Who trained Chetty at the aforementioned House of Hardcore. And Mikey Whitbread, what has he done? Former World Tag Team Champion with Mick Foley. Former World Tournament Champion and former World Heavyweight Champion. And in this very building, I saw Mikey Whitbread hit Steve Austin. One, two, three, to retain the Extreme World Heavyweight Championship. And no one can ever take that away from Mikey Whitbread. This should be an outstanding contest. No stranger to each other. And listen to the ovation for Mikey Whitbread. Who's hearing the chants of over a thousand in this thing and who knows how many other voices inside his head. Be hoping he fares better than the Fighting Irish tonight. Another member of the famous and phenomenal Anderson Wrestling family. Tough as they come, phenomenal amateur wrestler. And listen to the ovation from Mikey Whitbrick. Is he ever over? Referee Mike Keener to officiate our opening contest. So much history in this building. Since Paul Heyman closed his doors nearly five years ago, so many other promotions have run shows in this building trying to duplicate was what was the experience of extreme wrestling. And not until tonight have I truly felt like I was taking a trip back through time. Tonight, hardcore homecoming feels like the real deal. Feels like I never left. I feel like I'm home again. Couple of collar and elbow tie up. Simon Diamond extends the hand. Mikey Whipwreck says no. Collar and elbow tie up once again. Side headlock now by Mikey Whipwreck. Former Triple Crown winner for Extreme Wrestling. Shoulder block, down goes Simon Diamond. Up and over goes Mikey Whipwreck. Deep arm drag, nicely done by Simon Diamond. Mikey Whipwreck responds. And now the southpaw from Buffalo is unloading on Simon Diamond in the corner. Diamond set for the ride, reversal out of the corner. Monkey flip, blocked, nicely done by Mikey. Second turnbuckle, high cross body, cover, two and no. Two count only says referee Mike Keener. 
Simon Diamond goes downstairs. Mikey set for the ride. Mikey with the go behind. Nicely done. Mikey's looking for the whipper step early. There's a tag to the enforcer, C.W. Anderson, who looks to be in the best shape I have ever seen him in. Listen to the fans chanting for C.W. Anderson. Tag into Chris Chetty. Chris Chetty, such a gifted athlete, but man, that was a right hand. Chetty not even using any of his amateur wrestling skills or anything taught to him by Taz and Perry Saturn at the House of Hardcore. C.W. Anderson looks like a bear in a shooting gallery. And down he goes. Chris Chetty is the only one of the four wrestlers in the ring right now who has not been active for the past four and a half years. And you couldn't tell thus far. Spinebuster countered as was the Amityville Harder moments ago. Beautiful leaping scissors kick, nicely done. No ring rush shown thus far on Chris Chetty. Cover, two and no. CW is up for the ride, reversal out of the corner. CW charges, misses there, Simon Diamond with a clothesline on the apron. And that is the advantage that Simon Diamond and CW Anderson have. They have been a tag team regularly, yes with other partners, but also with one another, not only back in Extreme Wrestling in calendar year 2000, but since then, for the past four years, both in the States and in Japan, Simon Diamond and C.W. Anderson as the Extreme Horsemen have been semi-regular tag team partners. And I don't know how Chris Chetty and Mikey Whipwreck can overcome the cohesive team that is Simon Diamond and C.W. Anderson. Chetty wide open, takes a fist right to the ribs. That sucks. Anderson now trash talking, blatantly disrespecting Chetty in the corner, now stomping away. Boy, look at Anderson go. And now spits at Mikey Whipwreck. In comes Mikey. Referee Mike Keener catches him. And there was no tag made there behind the referee's back. In comes Simon Diamond illegally. And apparently the plan is to isolate and wear down Chris Chetty. And quite frankly, it's a sound strategy by Simon Diamond and C.W. Anderson. Again, another cheap shot on Mikey Whipwreck on the apron. As I noted earlier, Chris Chetty, the only one of these four wrestlers who has not been wrestling regularly since Paul Heyman closed his doors in early 2001. And that's why he's being isolated and targeted. Chetty gets caught. Double team flatline. Cover, will that be enough? Two, no, Mikey makes the save. There's a mistake I didn't think C.W. Anderson and Simon Diamond would make attempting a pin that close to their opponent's corner. May have cost him this match. Look at Anderson talking trash. That's going to come back and cost you against Chris Chetty. The crowd now rallying behind Chetty. Frees himself, but takes that big right hand. Chetty now set for the ride. Anderson charges, goes for all, misses, and takes a turnbuckle right in the gonads. That's going to hurt. Chris Chetty has got to make the tag. Got to tag in Mikey Whipwreck. It's now or never for Chris Chetty. Anderson makes the tag. In comes Simon Diamond. Chris Chetty lurches back out of desperation. Tags in Mikey, who is now throwing those overhead left hands, taking down Simon Diamond and C.W. Anderson repeatedly. Beautiful standing drop kick by Mikey Whipwreck. Anderson into the ropes. Standing Frankensteiner. Mikey Whipwreck can still go. Still wrestles like a world champion. This is the educational portion of our program. Count along with the baby faces. 
10 it is. And maybe a smart move not going any higher. Hello. That's got to be unpleasant for Simon. Tommen has just that super kick on Mikey Whipwreck. Mike Keener's checking for his teeth. Cover, two and no. Mikey Whipwreck somehow escapes that super kick, which certainly found the mark. God, it's hot in this building. And I'm not even wrestling. I'm just sitting here. Of course, I'm wearing a suit. Tornado DDT attempt countered. What impact of spine buster. That may be all. Chetty now behind CW Anderson. He gets caught. Amityville Horror coming up. Yes, CW Anderson gets planted. And Chetty's happy with himself. Reversal. Simon puts the brakes on. And it's time for Simon's series. Chetty gets planted everything Simon Diamond does. So crisp, so deliberate. And now Mikey Whipwreck gets caught. Or does he? Simon Diamond looking for the Simonizer. But there it is! Whipper Stepper! Whipper Stepper! Whipper Stepper! It's over! It's over! Oh, 
with three fakes. The one, the only, the blue beanie. That's the most unlikely professional wrestler I have ever met. lost about 110 pounds and she's in LA now. He doesn't sound too broken up about it last I spoke to him. Referee John Finnegan to officiate this contest, Tracy Smothers versus the Blue Meanie. This is gonna be a good old fashioned comedy match. Let me just make a bold prediction right now. It's not going to be uh, Pat O'Connor versus Luthez. Can you imagine Carl Gotch doing this? Finally, we've got a tie up now. Side headlock by the Meanie. Meanie set for the ride, dropped down by Smothers. Shoulder block by the Meanie, nicely done. Smothers caught off guard. Meanie flexing the guns. Smothers complaining about a pull of the tights, a close fist, and a handful of hair. All of them. Just, Finnegan goes, what are you talking about? Smothers says, pick one. He's lodging all his complaints now. Get him out of the way. Mother says, let's just wrestle, pal. I'm all for it. The dancing is kind of funny. Waist lock now by Smothers. It's a lot of waist to get around. And Meanie uses his rather ample posterior to break the waist lock. Now what are they complaining about? Had you not ordered that last pizza that Meany ate, maybe get his hands around his waist. Oh, 
just telling the media, I'm gonna show you how strong I am. I'm gonna pick you up and slam you. Smothers going for it. Meany is not. Scoop and a slam on Smothers. Meany deceptively strong. And again, Smothers, who was bad mouthing Finnegan, gets planted. And now Finnegan plants Smothers. Double close line. Cover, two and no. Finnegan on top, two and no. There's the mini splash. This may be it. Cover, one, two and no. Anybody else not cover Smothers? Anybody? Jocularity going on in this matchup. And I predicted this was going to be a good time. More entertainment than sport, if you will. If you are one of the, uh, the few that likes to call professional wrestling sports entertainment. And a huge fan myself. Be 
broken up about the dance-off. And he was winning that thing. He was ahead of my scorecard. Elbow to the face. Bulldog by the meanie. Cover. Two and no. Scoop and a slam once again on Smothers. Meany pulls up his pajama bottoms. My wife's got those same pajamas. You don't think Meany would... Never mind. Meany drops the leg. Cover. Two in. Meany hits the big splash in the corner. The big blue splash that is back the other way. Here's a shot for JT Smith. Down goes JT, another big blue splash in the corner. Smothers gets planted. And I think it's time for the mini saw. Oh, JT Smith now with a chain on his hand. Again, Tracy Smothers, J.T. Smith using every piece of cheap heel chicanery in the book to get the win. See, I was looking for the loaded boot of the chloroform rag. It was the chain. It was the chain. Poor meaty. Guy danced his heart out. And the fans chanting for meaty as they should. One of the great underdogs in all of professional sports. Take your bows, Meany. You deserve them.
Those chants of candy don't mean so much to Tammy. No question about it. It's been a long time since I've been in this building. I just have to say one quick thing before we get this party started. I'm, no, not that. Well, that's classy. Expect from this building? You're showing more than enough, Tammy. Tammy, thank you so much for the memories. 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 For the memories. Fans appreciate 
appreciate Danny during the road. He'll be out here. We appreciate that either. here tonight though, Gary. It's about 115 degrees in this building. Yeah, the most distasteful thing I've ever said. Oh, Gary Wolf just took that second rope in his sweaty balls. What are you looking at me for? He said sweaty balls first. Can't censor me. Roadkill stalking Tammy. Roadkill and Danny Doring attacking Johnny Grunge and Gary Wolf, ruining what was a beautiful segment. But thankfully, Tammy got the hell out of the ring. Such poor taste. Is that? It's 9 1 1! Here they live, six tile, 9 1 1!
just made himself into a superstar. Ball by Paul Heyman. Ran as hard as he could and scored every time out. I remember coming up and Kid Cash myself. I thought it's not what it's doing like Kid Rock. Who knew he was that good? You want to talk about it? You want to talk about it? Great. adjustment to heal. See, hat guys smell a little over the ears. It's good. 
we cut him off? Did he drive here? Does anyone know? Hopefully we'll bleed most of those words. I think you could say some of those words on television. Scorpio offers a hand and Kid Cash showing no respect. No respect. To a man that paved the way for young men like Kid Cash to make a living. Uh, Kid Cash just called Two Cold Scorpio old school, claiming that he is. He just called Two Cold Scorpio an old man. This one's gonna break down in a hurry. Hey Cash, you might want to be scared of Scorpio. Cash, be careful. You do not want to trade blows with two cold Scorpio. You may have the speed advantage. You may be quicker. You definitely have the youth advantage. You better use them all. You do not want to go toe to toe and trade punches with Scorpio. Here comes Scorpio, leapfrog off the ropes. Cartwheel by Scorpio. Spin kicked up, as was the leg sweep. We got a standoff. Hopefully a lot of the bad blood is out of the way now. We can see what should be a wrestling clinic. Power and elbow tie up, Scorpio ducks down, waist lock nicely done. Cash down to one knee, looking to reach back and snatch a leg. Scorpio with a wide vertical base using his height advantage. Making sure he is not countered or reversed. Cash breaks the hands. Thus breaks the hold. Counts with a hammer lock. Nice and Scorpio so quick into a top wrist lock. Watch your hair, Paul. Watch your hair. Scorpio just so quick, lightning quick. Now with an arm bar on Cash. Got his knee planted in Cash's other shoulder. Scorpio right now taking Mr. TNA total nonstop attitude, Kid Cash to school. And look at Scorpio just working over the shoulder of Cash. And this is smart, quite frankly. I think Scorpio needs to wear down Cash. I think if both of these athletes empty their tanks, go 100 miles an hour, Cash comes up with the advantage. He's younger and he's faster. Scorpio having a good time, but trying to slow things down. And right now, Cash is falling into that trap. Cash should not be working over the arm of Scorpio. And that's a little bit of inexperience. Scorpio nice and unrolls through Kimba. Back on top for his lock. Cash back to the hammerlock into a full Nelson. Scorpio doesn't stay in it long. Back they go, side headlock now. Cash just keeps on floating through back to the hammerlock. Scorpio now responding in kind. Floats all the way around. Double leg takedown. Lateral press to end up. Leg sweep nice and on elbow misses. Cash back the other way. He lands the elbow. Stand off. It's still like the opening rounds of the championship boxing matchup. A lot of jabbing going on, a lot of circling. Both combatants feeling one another out. I believe this is the first time that these two have ever met. 
Nice to done by Scorpio, raises the hand, makes Cash look up for just a split second. Kick to the midsection and takes him down. And Scorpio now again riding Cash. And let me tell you something, making Cash carry all of his 225 pounds and fight for every breath in a building that is this damn hot is very smart and the mark of a true ring general. You fans watching at home can't truly understand. It is, it is well over 100 degrees in this building. It is a hot June night here in South Philadelphia. There is no air conditioning and there's over cover two and no. And there are over 1,200 people in this building. When you include the fans, the over 1,000 fans from six different countries, some who paid $2,000 for their tickets on eBay, packed this building, this former bingo hall, the arena, on the corner of Swanson and Rittner Streets here in South Philadelphia. I mean, it's hard to breathe in this building. I can't imagine wrestling under those lights. You can see right now Cash moving very slowly. Scorpio's strategy paying off. And our first play to Chops is served tonight. Kid Cash up for the ride. Beautiful leapfrog by Scorpio, drop down from way up, standing drop kick. What vertical leaping ability, and a super kick finds the mark. Too cold, Scorpio just having his way with the young, brash, arrogant, disrespectful Kid Cash. And now Cash from the outside. This is a mistake. This is a mistake. Keep your eye on Scorpio. Through the ropes, pair of boots to the chest, Scorpio skins the cat. Waiting on Kid Cash once again. over with Pescado, Cash back in the ring, Scorpio lands on his feet, and now Cash going up and over, Hunan Khan Rana on the outside. And I hate to say I told you so, but I knew it was a mistake the minute Scorpio threw Cash to the outside. Inside the ring, I think Scorpio will get the better of Cash nine times out of 10, but anything can happen outside the ring, those kicks are stiff. Good Lord. It is just so unpredictable on the outside of the ring. And this is where Cash can even up the odds against Scorpio. Cash just measuring Scorpio. Chopping away. Oh, my God. oh, reeking across, the, just reeking his nails down across the back of Scorpio. Oh. I think he pissed Scorpio off. And I think what should have been a wrestling clinic is about to get ugly. thrown to the chairs onto the floor. What the hell is Cash doing? Oh my God! You are watching Hardcore Homecoming and Kid Cash has just launched himself like a missile from the stage onto the floor at Two Cold Scorpio. Scorpio.
Scipio, who had this matchup well in hand, did himself no favors, absolutely no favors, by throwing Kid Cash to the outside. And again, Kid Cash just measuring Scorpio with those stiff kicks. Kid Cash trying to cool himself off as I venture this building well over 100 degrees. Referee John Pee Wee Moore putting the count on two cold Scorpio. Kid Cash breaks the count. He wants to beat Scorpio in the ring. He does not want to win by count out. To mention the fact, if a match ended here on a count out, the hardcore homecoming at the arena in South Philadelphia, I think we'd have a riot on our hands. Scorpio in a bad way. Really took a beating at the hands of the whole body of Kid Cash. And Cash just waiting for Scorpio, baseball slide, sends him to the outside. No protective mats here in South Philadelphia, as the Pennsylvania State Athletic Commission does not mandate that we use them, and therefore we don't. And Scorpio, who brought his tag team championship belt all the way from Japan, may be regretting it. And now Scorpio's got the gold. Looks like Scorpio's getting a second wind. Straight left jab, nicely done. Look how quick he snaps that jab. I remember an incident in the alley behind this very arena where a few intoxicated fans tried to uh, prove how tough they were with some of the wrestlers. I saw Scorpio use those punches, clear out that alley by himself. Well, he had smothers, quite frankly. Scorpio hits the steel guardrail. Boot to the face of Kid Cash. Scorpio now waiting on Kid Cash. Ah, the lovely fans of South Philadelphia. Warm people, warm is the word for them. Caring, loving people. Scorpio now trying to put away Cash. Lands it with authority. Scorpion up to the second turnbuckle. Somersault leg drop. Unbelievable agility. Scorpio says that is not enough. Two cold Scorpio who still flies through the air like a cruiserweight. Scorpio now pushes the button to the top floor. All the way up top. It's yet another somersault leg drop. I've got to say, Scorpio, call it the heat, call it the lights, call it a little fatigue. For well, him wanting to basically embarrass the young brash Kid Cash. Failed to hook a leg, and I think had Scorpio hooked the leg, would have ended this matchup moments ago. Reversal on the Irish whip, tip up in the corner, Cash up top, misses the moonsault press, Scorpio misses the high cross body, Cash down the second turnbuckle, all the way up top, he hits the moonsault press, hooks the leg, two and three quarters. This is anybody's matchup. 
The victory in this contest is up for grabs. And Cash is kicking field goals, double springboard, going for the hood end. Conrada just snaps Scorpio over nicely done. Will it be enough? Two and no. Left shoulder up. Boy, that was close. We'll call that two and 15 sixteenths. God, I hated fractions. Man, did Scorpio get all of that one? Cash may be out on his feet. Scorpion all planting those knees. And that is the European influence. Backflip, buzzsaw, kick to the back of the neck. And look at that cover. Body scissors. And Cash, to his credit, showing great resilience, manages to kick out. Evie says, get off the hair. Are you kidding me? You're in Philly. The arms are crossed underneath. Good God, did you see his head bounce up over the canvas? Scorpio all the way up top again. Could it be the 450 splash? It's over. Old school triumphs over new school. Professor Two Cold Scorpio PhD. Two Cold Scorpio hasn't lost a step. But I am equally impressed, if not more impressed, with the showing of Kid Cash, who showed everyone tonight that he is indeed money. function.
proven your point. John Cronus nor any one man can beat the bad breed on his own. And John Cronus already busted open from that shot with the steel chair. There's no reunion of the Eliminators. Let's just stop this before Cronus gets hurt. No! Son of a bitch! Wait a minute! The odds have just been even up.
Jack pointing to it.
you and Ian, much love, because you know how we lay it down in this song.
anything not to talk about Jason. Now's a good time to log on to HardcoreHomecoming.com. And here comes Jerry Lynn. Another former World Heavyweight Champion. If I'm not mistaken, it was just incredible who Jerry Lynn defeated for that title in St. Paul, Minnesota. It was October of 2000. And it seems like just yesterday, looking at Jerry Lynn, it could have been just yesterday. This is Jerry Lynn's first wrestling match back in about 11 months. Just now recovering from rotator cuff surgery. And you certainly couldn't tell by looking at him. forget the summer series that these two had. Some of the greatest wrestling matches I had ever seen. I believe over the course of the summer they had 21 matches. They were all tied up 10 apiece when in this very building, I do believe it was this very building, just incredible, won the 21st match to win the series 11 to 10. But in the end, I would say it was Jerry Lynn who got the last laugh by capturing the World Heavyweight Championship. This should be an outstanding contest. I am very curious to see how Jerry Lynn fares. Just Incredible has been wrestling since Paul Heyman's traveling circus of violence. And hardcore closed its doors in early 2001. Jerry Lynn has spent his time not only wrestling, but I would say just as much time. It's more of a management role for TNA. And again, for the past 11 months, Jerry Lynn has not been able to work out or wrestle at all due to a torn rotator cuff, which had to be surgically repaired. So I am very curious to see how Jerry Lynn fares this evening against his old nemesis, Just Incredible. Shoulder block, down goes Just Incredible. Jerry Lynn's in great shape. You'd never know he's coming off an injury. He's in fantastic physical condition. And apparently a lot quicker than both Jason and Just Incredible had anticipated. Never underestimate Jerry Lynn. 
He is without question, and not just in my opinion, he is without question, I'll argue it with anybody, the most underrated wrestler there has been in the past 10 years in the great sport of professional wrestling. Fans behind Jerry Lynn, they always are. No matter where he goes, the fans always rally behind Jerry Lynn. There's just something fans can relate to about a really decent and nice guy who succeeds through hard work. Jerry Lynn floats over, a nice arm drag. Referee John Pee Wee Moore exerting his authority. Now, punching the referee in the face is about the only way to get disqualified. But if you don't knock him out, if he's still conscious, then he will call for the bell. Jerry Lynn looking for a collar and elbow tie-up. Just incredible, faked him out, went downstairs. Now, straight right hand, something fancy about that. Knife head chops in the corner. Look at Jerry Lynn fire back on Just Incredible. Thumb to the eye stops that. God, that's got to hurt. And another rake of the eyes by Just Incredible. Clothesline duck, Jerry Lynn full head of steam, tilt the world now, flying head scissors, nicely done by Jerry Lynn, deep arm drag into the arm bar. Jerry Lynn showing absolutely no signs whatsoever of ring rust. Jerry Lynn now drives the knee into the bicep of Justin Credible. Does Justin Credible have a spare wife beater in his back pocket? I should try that when I get these spaghetti stains on mine. It happens. Arm ringer now by Jerry Lynn. Straight right hand. It's more of a haymaker by Just Incredible. Tell you what, despite the layoff, Jerry Lynn has been at least one step ahead of Just Incredible throughout this matchup thus far. Jerry Lynn with the reversal out of the corner. Just incredible, upside down, lands back on his feet. Jerry Lynn now full head of steam, bulldog. <laughs> Through the legs of Just Incredible. Double leg takedown, drags Just into the outside. Just to try to roll away from Jerry Lynn. Here comes Jerry. Up and over. Guillotine leg drop, back of the head. Just incredible to the floor. <laughs> I believe Just Incredible may have hit his head on the concrete floor. Reversal, Jerry Lynn is the steal on the outside. Close line, Jerry Lynn backwards. Jerry Lynn lands in one of those commemorative chairs. Cheap plug, also available right now at hardcorehomecoming.com. Yeah, what can I say, I'm on commission. Just incredible now cinching up Jerry Lynn. Look at the suplex, Jerry Lynn lands on his feet. Nicely done by Jerry. Closed line, second time's a charm and this time just incredible. Closed line sends just incredible now into the first row. Jerry Lynn now setting up a table. Oh my God! Did you see the velocity? Just a grazing blow by Jerry Lynn who ran full speed down the length of the ring apron and launched himself head over heels at Just Incredible. And quite frankly, his momentum was only stopped when his body hit the unforgiving concrete floor here at the arena. That may have done more damage to Jerry Lynn than to Just Incredible, as it was Jerry who came up limping. Just 
Captain Credible downstairs with a steel chair. No. DDT on the chair. Jerry Lynn favoring that shoulder and recently surgically repaired shoulder. Keep your eye on Jason. Jerry Lynn still managing to drive Just Incredible head first into the steel chair and now the blood flowing freely from the forehead of Just Incredible. Jerry Lynn now hammering away on Just Incredible. Snapmare takes him over. And now Jerry Lynn trying to further open up that rip, that ripped flesh in the face of Just Incredible. It's an aggressive side of Jerry Lynn we don't often see, but there is just so much bad blood, literally, between, oh my God, he's biting him! Keep your eye on Jason up on the apron with the steel chair. And Jason proved to be the distraction. That's why he's out here. Super kick into the steel chair, driving backwards into the face of Jerry Lynn. And just like that, a bloody just incredible has taken over control of this matchup thanks to Jason on the outside. Jerry Lynn can't even stand up, face first into the second turnbuckle. Just incredible, now stomping all over Jerry Lynn, steel chair up against the face. Jason holding it in place, keep your eye on Just Incredible. Drives the knee into the steel chair, into the skull of Jerry Lynn. And now Jerry's shoulder to that steel chair. Two and a half. Jerry Lynn gets the right shoulder up. Just incredible. Can't believe it. Referee John Pee Wee Moore asking Jerry Lynn if he wants to give it up. If he wants to submit, you've got to be kidding me. I think Jerry Lynn sat at home for the past 11 months recovering from shoulder surgery only to return to the ring and give it up. Not gonna happen. Once again, the fans rallying behind Jerry Lynn. And now they're just trading blows. Jerry Lynn getting the better of that exchange. Reversal out of the corner, tip up. Jerry Lynn now, reversal, body scissors, takes Just Incredible over two and a half. Close line duck back the other way. Jerry Lynn, full out of steam, gets caught, side slam. Nicely done in midair. Great adjustment by Just Incredible. Cover, lateral press, hook of the leg, two and a half. Just incredible, looking to put away Jerry Lynn, wisely throws him to the outside where Jason can once again be a factor. I believe Just Incredible senses that inside the ring he cannot beat Jerry Lynn, not tonight anyway, Jerry Lynn looks better. But with Jason running interference on the outside, he is the great equalizer. And he is the best chance that Just Incredible has of winning this matchup tonight here at Hardcore Homecoming. You get back in, you don't take it. Just incredible, drops the leg. Lateral press, hook of the leg, two and no. Rear chin lock now by Just Incredible. Knee planted firmly between the shoulder blades of Jerry Lynn. Wrenching back. Pulling back the head of Jerry Lynn. Jerry Lynn again will not give it up. 
And Wallace predominantly works over the neck of Jerry Lynn. I can't think it's pleasant for his recently surgically repaired shoulder either. Jerry Lynn frees himself. The trifecta of elbows. Just incredible with a thumb to the eye. Jerry Lynn set for the ride. Gets the boot up in the face of Just Incredible. Nice rotation, deep power slam by Just Incredible. Cover, two and no. Left shoulder up this time. Just Incredible for some reason arguing with Hat Guy. Just incredible, standing on the throat of Jerry Lynn. Just incredible, looking to put away Jerry Lynn and instead finds himself with the old 7-10 split. And just like that, the pendulum of momentum swings into the corner of Jerry Lynn. Jerry Lynn now opening up overhand rights on Just Incredible. Reversal off the Irish whip. Jerry Lynn puts on the break. Short arm clothesline, nicely done. Down goes Just Incredible again. Clothesline ducked that time. Jerry Lynn, double leg takedown. No, Just Incredible looking for a pile driver. No, Jerry Lynn picks him up. He's got him, looking for the kryptonite crunch. He hits it. Jerry Lynn hits the kryptonite crunch. Cover. No. Right shoulder up. This one is a gimme. It's anyone's matchup. Incredible step for the ride, no reversal. Steel chair to the back of Jerry Lynn by Jason. Just incredible looking for that's incredible. The tombstone pile driver, he hits it. This should be all, he hooks the leg. Two and Jerry Lynn kicks out. And just incredible is incredulous. Blood flowing down his face. He wants to end this matchup in the worst way and Jerry Lynn just will not die. He's looking for another tombstone. Jerry Lynn now, nice counter. Snapmare by Just Incredible. Close line duck by Jerry Lynn. Plants the boot. Singes up Just Incredible. He's got the cradle pile driver. Just Incredible gets spiked. Two and no. Just Incredible gets the left shoulder up. What a matchup. Matchup is even money. The brass ring hangs in the balance for either Jerry Lynn or Just Incredible to reach up and grab. It's hardcore Hulk. And once again, Jason interfering, shoving Jerry Lynn off the top turnbuckle. Damn it! Jason may have just ruined what should have been a classic. Jerry Lynn now down, just incredible, ascending the turnbuckles. Jason shouting instructions to Jerry Lynn, just incredible, now finds himself crushed on the top turnbuckle. Springboard drop kick on Jason. Just incredible, still caught up on the top turnbuckle. He landed crotch first, that's not pleasant. Where is Jerry Lynn go? Oh my God! Reverse victory roll down through the table all the way to the concrete floor.
I cannot believe that this is Jerry Lynn's first matchup back after an 11 month layoff to recover from rotator cuff surgery. Cover, two, and Jason now pulls referee John Pee Wee Moore out of the ring. I have never seen this much interference from a single manager in a single matchup ever. Just incredible from behind. Now calling for blatant interference. But it's Jazz! That's Jazz! Jazz just shoved Jason off the top turnbuckle! It's the best booty in the business, Jazz! Jazz with a go behind. Hangman's neck breaker, Hangwoman's neck breaker on Jason. Take that thing, baby. And now, finally, Jason should no longer be a factor in this matchup. You gotta be kidding. And Jazz just blatantly kicking Jason's ass. And now, maybe, finally, mono or mono, Jerry Lynn, just incredible, hardcore homecoming here at the arena in South Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Who is the better man? Jerry Lynn looking for the tombstone pile driver. Reversal by just incredible, this should be it. No, Jerry Lynn back the other way. Cradle tombstone pile driver hooks the leg. He got him! Jerry Lynn gets the dupe. Just incredible, but Jerry Lynn is not of this world. historic events I have ever had the pleasure of being involved in. Some of the greatest t-shirts I have ever seen.
Here's another cheap plug. The hardcore Edmund Hope drumming shirt the Sandman is wearing right now is available at hardcorehomecoming.com. And the stickiest caressing is not. Ladies and gentlemen, he's a coming to the ring by the Blue Meanie and the Musketeer. Sandman, but also brainwashing his then young son, Tyler. It's obvious to everyone in here that I got twice the pop that you did, because I'm a much bigger star. I would say I have far away the biggest pop in the show, and I would rank yours right up there with John Cole. Raven 
goes downstairs now. Breathing, tearing away at the eyes of a Sandman. Now pulling at the nose as well. Johnny Polo and Raven, a gimmick that he'd love to forget. But one of my personal favorites. Face first into the top turnbuckle goes to Sandman. And now Raven just picking his shots. Sandman comes out of the corner, fighting, throws Raven to the outside. As a brawler as Raven is, I have got to think at some point, being on the outside is going to work to the advantage of the Sandman, and that may be the point. Sandman now with an overhand left on Raven. So much history between these two former extreme heavyweight world wrestling champions. Mocking the Musketeer. How can you not? Sandman cinching up Raven, looking to suplex Raven on that ladder on the outside. Raven now. Step suplex, Sandman hits the ladder in the concrete floor. Welcome back, Sandman. Ladder to the midsection. And now Raven setting up that ladder up against the steel guard rail at ringside. That does not bode well for the Sandman. Sandman hits the ladder and the concrete floor yet again. This has been textbook Raven. A few laughs, a few ha-has on the microphone. Lake sweep, nowhere for Sandman to go. Raven disarming his opponent mentally. With the jocularity on the microphone before the matchup, and then once the matchup starts, Raven dissecting his opponent, the Sandman, head first into the concrete, upside down into the steel guard ring. Raven has been a success, as much as I hate to say it, he has been a success in every wrestling promotion he has ever competed in. And the reason is he is every bit as good as he thinks he is. It's that simple. The Sandman now hammering away at Raven with those overhead lefts. Little teeter-totter action with the ladder catches Raven right underneath the chin. Sandman very proud of himself, and who can blame him? That certainly slowed down Raven, meaning now up on the ring apron. Sandman again hammering away at Raven, who is now busted open and bad. Raven gets both boots right into the midsection of the Sandman. That table now set up in the corner. Powder in the eyes! Meany with the powder in the eyes of the Sandman! DDT! Even flow! Raven effect! Call it what you like! Two and no! Sandman gets the left shoulder up. And Raven still directing traffic, still shouting instructions to both the Blue Meanie and the Musketeer at ringside. Such a Svengali, he always manages to, to brainwash some weak-minded followers.
Raven was looking for the Bulldog out of the corner. Sandman throws him through the table in the corner. Sheer desperation on the part of the Sandman. Raven's in trouble now. The flock knows it. Here they come. They get caned. Raven out buried underneath that ladder. As the Sandman ascends the turnbuckles. And there's the rolling rock. The Sandman crushing Raven underneath that unforgiving ladder from the top turnbuckle. And the Sandman, it appears, is not done yet. Raven misses with the cane. Sandman from behind, white Russian leg sweep. Sandman very slow to get up. No doubt a combination of the beating, the heat in this building, and the fact that he is drunk out of his mind. Sandman now going up top once again. Raven laid prone on the table. And the Sandman this time leaping. Somersault, Zentan folds Raven in half. May have broken his ribs. This should be all covered. Two and it would have been all had he not pulled the referee out of the ring. Look at him, he's so proud of himself, the blue haired goof. Sandman looking for a DDT. In comes Nalini yet again. Hits the hangman's neck breaker. And Raven now wants to see the meanie salt that we did not see earlier. And the meanie gets the Sandman head-to-head -head contact. Raven calling for another one. And meanie going up top. And again he got him. This time driving his head into the ribs of the Sandman. And Raven wants to see yet another meanie salt. And he gets it. Cover! No! Not quite a three count inches away. Raven can't believe it. Mike Keener says two count only. Raven calls for a chair. The Musketeer obliges. Out Raven looking for the drop toe hold into the steel chair. Sandman leaps it and throws the steel chair right into the face of Raven. Meanie gets it too. And the Sandman now windmilling everybody with that ladder. I think he just busted the Meanie open. And the Musketeer gets it. DDT! This should be all... Is that Donnie Allen? Devious Don E. Allen? He was the original and perhaps only jobber we ever had. He's Mikey Whitbrick! In comes Mikey Whitbrick! Long time friend of the Sandman! He's going to work on Donnie Allen! Donnie Allen thrown to the outside! Mikey Whitbrick to the rescue! And like olive oil giving spinach to Popeye, Mikey's got a brewski for the Sandman! What the hell? Whipper Snapper!
hardcore legend. A man who has seen it all and has done it all. Weeks away from his 61st birthday. The one, the only, the immortal Terry Funk. the barbed wire, I guess he thought that it was fake barbed wire, gimmick barbed wire, plastic barbed wire. You don't do that at Hardcore Homecoming, it's the real deal. And yet it's going to stand. The Pennsylvania State Athletic Commission waving the rules for one night old. Oh my God! Together against, after over five years, these two haven't spoken to each other for five years. The Queen of Extreme, Grand C, once again, the head cheerleader for the franchise, Shane Douglas. Is it possible that her breasts have gotten even bigger since I last saw them? Almost five years. Go! God, we've been in this building for nearly four hours. And at some point during this matchup, if the heat in this building is now over 150 degrees, either the unbelievable inhuman heat in this building is going to cause all that silicone to melt. Or she's gonna catch one of those fun bags on the barbed wire and it's gonna explode. Oh. It's good to be the franchise. It is so good to be the franchise. I'd wrestle a barbed wire for just one kiss like that. Hardcore Homecoming was 
he can pull it off when he told me about it last year.
Tribute to his late great uncle, the original Sheik. This is not a triple threat match. This is a three-way dance. It is an elimination matchup. The match does not end if one of the three combatants is pinned or submits. Two men must be eliminated by pinfall or submission only. And when one man is left, when one man has avoided elimination, that sole survivor is the winner of an extremely hardcore three-way dance. A three-way collar and elbow tie-up. A chain of headlocks. Referee John Finnegan officiating this matchup. goes to the back of the line, putting Shane Douglas out in front near the barbed wire. And Shane Douglas now being driven into that barbed wire. Funk hits the barbed wire. I cannot imagine what those barbs feel like. Puncturing skin. But Terry Funk and Shane Douglas can sure tell me. Human beings should not ever have contact with barbed wire. Oh my God. Cover one, two, and no. Barbed wire is for animals. People have no business ever coming in contact with barbed wire. Shane Douglas this time escaping the barbed wire. Sabu and Funk both going out of the franchise. Shane Douglas, Douglas trapped now. As Sabu and Terry Funk picking their shots, hammering away at Shane Douglas. Keep your eye on Sabu, Air Sabu ready for takeoff! You are watching Hardcore Homecoming from the arena in South Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. This is our main event, a rematch of the matchup that started it all. The night the line was crossed, the three-way dance, the franchise Shane Douglas, Sabu, and Terry Funk tonight in a no-ropes barbed wire three-way dance. Terry Funk hits that steel guardrail on the outside. And now Terry Funk's face being ripped across that barbed wire by both Shane Douglas and Sabu. Oh my God! And now Sabu's face being raked across the barbed wire by Shane Douglas. Oh my God! I cannot 
cannot imagine what it's like to have your face ripped across. Borp, oh my God, Sabu! Chest first into that Borp wire, no shirt! Funk now hammering away on the franchise. Terry Funk again hung up in that barbed wire. And finally the franchise Shane Douglas tastes the barbed wire. I do believe now all three men have had their facial flesh ripped open by that unforgiving barbed wire. Douglas in the corner. Terry Funk pulled the steel chair. Sabu looking to springboard instead goes chest first into that barbed wire. Sabu's leg was caught up in that barbed wire. He's now bleeding from his chest, his face, and his leg. Hangman's neck breaker. And again, Terry Funk is tightly choked across that barbed wire. You can hear Sabu screaming, my leg, as you see Terry Funk's head now being jammed between two strands of barbed wire by Shane Douglas. Funk is hung up in the barbed wire. And Terry Funk, Terry Funk hung up. Sabu has just taped up his leg like he did his arm so many years ago to stop the bleeding. Sabu now with the sleeper on the franchise, Shane Douglas. And a sleeper would be a very effective hold combined with the blood loss and the fact that this building is well over 100 degrees at this point. And now it's the franchise, Shane Douglas with a sleeper. And Funk says, looky here. Fans, again, I cannot emphasize enough how damned hot it is in this building. That, coupled with the blood loss and a sleeper hold, and this may be all two and no. Bill Alfonso trying to wash some of the blood out of the eyes of Sabu, covered by Terry Funk, and no. Shane Douglas covers everybody. Oh my God! Shane Douglas raked across the barbed wire. Terry Funk now's hand caught in the barbed wire, ripping away at the flesh on his hand. Grand Cena attending to Shane Douglas, who is screaming in pain and bleeding on the outside. Terry Funk with a stunner of his own. And now Terry Funk wisely sliding underneath the barbed wire, pulling Sabu out after him. Pile driver on the concrete floor. Team with words of encouragement telling the telling the franchise get back in there. She's so brave. She's so brave. Get back in there. Are you kidding me? Sabu threw into the first row. Take a legend home night here at Hardcore Homecoming. And there is just blood everywhere. Look at the bloodstained back of the franchise. 
Most of that's good. Sabu with the chair to the face of Shane Douglas. Shane didn't even see it coming. What a right hand by Sabu. Douglas with a blatant low blow. Cinching up Sabu. Oh my God. Sabu just dropped on that barbed wire. And Sabu's legs have just been torn apart by that barbed wire, as has his chest and his face. Just something so unnerving and unnatural and disturbing about watching human beings. Look at the hair hanging from that barbed wire as Terry Funk goes downstairs on the franchise, Shane Douglas. Steel chair to the face of Sabu. Funk is on a tear now. And again, the steel chair into the face of the franchise, Shane Douglas. And again, on Sabu, who hits the barbed wire. Oh, my God. Oh, shit. Sabu is all caught up in that barbed wire. And now Funk is, is tangled up in the barbed wire. Oh my God. And now all three strings of barbed wire. You see it tearing through the form of Terry Funk coming into his place. Somebody hurt. Funk screaming in pain. Alfonso choking the franchise. And now Francito after Alfonso. Ooh, low blow on Alfonso. And Francito's going out after him. Let's get back to the ring. And we've got a cat fight. Cat fight. We've got a cat fight on the ramp. We've got four boy in the ring. We've got a cat fight on the ramp. Sabu again being driven to the, oh my God, Sabu's head caught up between two strands of barbed wire. Oh my God, somebody cut him loose. Shane Douglas from behind on Terry Funk, and down goes referee John Finnegan, and that did look like an accident. from the barbed wire, Shane Douglas now after knocking out referee John Finnegan, and that was, that was with purpose. That was not an accident. Shane Douglas trying to end the career of Terry Funk once and for all. In comes referee John Pee Wee Moore. We need a referee. Funk kicks out again. Cover now on Sabu. And Sabu kicks out. Terry Funk now jabbing away. Straight right, and there's the left hand haymaker. Nicely done. No, Terry, please. Terry, no, no, no. Terry Funk getting some payback on the franchise. Shane Douglas, Funk will not go quietly. 
team with words of encouragement into the ear of Shane Douglas. Francine's got the Francine now just pulled a chain out of her dress. And Francine is wrapping that chain around the fist of the franchise. Douglas has the chain, and this does not bode well. And Douglas just knocked out another referee on purpose. And down goes Fuck. And down goes Sabu. Shane Douglas has knocked out everybody with that steel chain. And none of this is spontaneous. And now into the back of the neck of Terry Funk. Shane Douglas with a steel chair. You know, you've got to think Shane Douglas as the promoter as the promoter of Hardcore Homecoming, knew all along that he wanted to make this main event a barbed wire matchup, and knew for who knows how long, maybe weeks, maybe Funk and Sabu only found out minutes, minutes before this matchup. Maybe Shane Douglas knew for weeks or months that he was gonna call the Pennsylvania State Athletic Commission. Maybe he knew for that long, maybe he conspired for that long to make this a barbed wire matchup. Douglas has been conspiring and plotting for years to end the career of Terry Funk. And why not do it on the biggest, the widest stage possible here at Hardcore Homecoming? Shane Douglas did not come here tonight to win this matchup. Shane Douglas came here tonight to cripple Terry Funk and maybe Sabu, who has dropped throat first across the barbed wire. And now Shane Douglas with a ladder set up in the ring. Let me see it, baby, let me see it. What the fuck? I want to see it. Shane Douglas now is going to finish off Sabu and or Terry Funk once and for all. This was the master plan of the franchise Shane Douglas. Not again, what the, what the hell happened? Did we lose power? Did we lose power? Play on. It's Mick Foley! In a referee shirt! Yet another man who the franchise Shane Douglas has pissed off in his long, illustrious career. And is there anyone Shane Douglas has it pissed off in his long, illustrious career? Mr. Sacco? It's not really hardcore now, is it? It's a sweat suck. Douglas goes down low and oh, I think he just vomited. And look at Foot now hammering the franchise. Double arm DDT by Nick Foley. Douglas 
Who capitalizes? Sunset flip off the chair. But Funk rolls through a Funk on top. No. And now the barbed wire from Foley's hand, from the referee's hand, caught up in Sabu's leg again. Oh my God, Terry Funk with a slingshot. Sabu goes through the barbed wire all the way to the top three floor. It's over! It's over! 